In this video, I'm going to show you how I achieve these film looks using DaVinci Resolve with Dehancer. Most of these shots were graded with the Kodak Vision 3 profile, which is actually the only mass-produced category of color negative film for motion pictures today. Before using Dehancer, I would only mainly use LUTs for color grading, which is basically a set of numbers that remap the values of an image to change its look. On their website, Dehancer emphasizes that their plugin is not just a collection of LUTs, but a complete and comprehensive tool for the film emulation, which recreates all the main characteristics of the film working according to the analogous principles. So they really put in a lot of effort to make these film emulations accurate. As of today, they have 63 different film profiles. It gives you a whole range of tools to help you replicate the film development process in a digital environment. So as a non-professional colorist, this is a really powerful tool for me and saves me a lot of time and overall just improves my workflow efficiency. I've only used DaVinci Resolve for less than two years and I've spent tons of effort trying to emulate that film look, which can be really time consuming. So what's nice about this plugin is that it gets the job done really quickly and it can do all the heavy lifting for you with just one node. Speaking of nodes, this is the node sequence that Dehancer recommends. Just making sure that the Dehancer plugin node should be placed at the end of the processing chain. Okay, before going to the editing screen, full disclosure, Dehancer did reach out to me to make an honest review of this plugin. And if by the end of the video, you are interested in buying this plugin, I do have a 10% code, a coupon code, which is Candy Films. I'll leave a link in the video description. Now, I just want to preface by saying that I'm not a professional colorist and I'm constantly learning and improving. So if you know any tips or suggestions, please let me know. Okay, let's take a look at my nodes here. I would usually start with white balance, exposure, contrast, and color. But even though Dehancer does have pretty much all these controls inside the plugin itself, I would still have these nodes separately because it gives me more control. So make all the appropriate adjustments first and then go to Dehancer. Here on the very top, you can input your camera source. Uh, they have over a hundred camera profiles. You can probably find your camera here, but if you can, of course, you can still use the color space transform. Just add a node for that before Dehancer. Obviously you should be shooting in log for the best results. And here in the input corrections, you can change the exposure, temperature, tint, and the fringe, which is basically chromatic aberration reduction. And down here in the film profiles, as I said, they have 63 different profiles for you to choose from. I would normally go with the Vision 3, which is, as I said before, the only mass produced film stock for motion pictures today. T stands for tungsten, D stands for daylight. So choose the type of Vision 3 based on the type of light you shot it in. So this one is shot in bright daylight and I would choose Vision 3 50D here. You can push or pull the film and down here in the film developer, basically the conventional way of processing film is that you could configure the formula of the developer solution to change the look of the film. For example, developer temperature and concentration can change the contrast of the film and then gamma correction determines how much the midtones are shifted towards shadows or highlights. And then you can turn down the saturation of the most intense colors with color separation. And the saturation of the film can be controlled by the properties of the dyes that are put into the emulsion at the development stage. So the color boost is a great way to adjust the saturation gently and does not lead to clipping. The next one here is film compression. This lets you fine tune the redistribution of the highlights so the image becomes more flexible for further manipulation. Next, expand is a tool that provides a separate control for black and white points. They recommend changing the black and white points immediately after a profile, a film profile is selected. The next one is film printing. This is basically the last technical stage of the analog video production. 
After the print, it can be shown directly on the screen using a film projector or scanned for digital conversion. So in this plugin, they provide us with a few different print mediums. The Kodak 2383 print is usually used for the last stage of processing. It's probably the most common one. But I also like the Kodak Endura glossy paper, so I would go for either one of the last two here, just depending on what kind of look you want. And then you have the choice of changing the print settings to your desire. I like to add more tonal contrast and adjust the color density. Moving on to the color head, it's just an analog color correction tool. I generally use my previous nodes for color correction, but sometimes I'll do a little adjustment here. Next, we have film grain. This is just another major component to making your image look more film-like. You can select one of their grain profiles and ISO, and then you can adjust it accordingly. I usually turn it down to somewhere between 5 and 10. Halation is that red-orange halo effect around your bright light sources, and bloom is usually combined with halation, which adds kind of a dream-like feel to your image. And film damage is emulating dust, hair, scratches, and stains that are on the film itself. And film breath is just another effect that adds imperfection to your film. It adds accidental changes to exposure, contrast, and color from frame to frame as the film moves. Again, I usually don't turn this on. The gate weave is kind of a jitter look, a mechanical movement of the film as it's pulled through the frame window. Overscan is adding like an overlay of the film itself. You can choose between seven different overlays. Some of them are pretty cool, but I, again, I don't really use this. And then we have vignetting. So that's pretty much all the settings that Dehancer provides you, which is quite a bit as you can see. It really is a very comprehensive tool for emulating film. So let's look at the before and then after of what I just did right there. What do you think? All right, so what are my final thoughts on this plugin? Well, I'd say that this is a pretty powerful tool for those that are looking to give their digital footage a genuine film-like appearance. It's easy to use, integrates well with the DaVinci workflow, it's customizable, it's really convenient, which is perfect for hobbyist colorists like myself. So the biggest complaint or the downside that many people have is its price. At $449 US dollars, it's not pocket change. But I would say this, for filmmakers, time is money. And if you want the versatility and the convenience of this plugin to quickly achieve the film look that you desire, this might be a worthy investment for you. There's probably cheaper alternatives out there. Or you might not even find this plugin necessary. You can, you know, spend more time and effort emulating this look just with DaVinci Resolve. So that's my overall review of this plugin. Again, I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to use that 10% coupon code. If you like the video, subscribe and follow me on Instagram. I'll see you in the next video.